Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, it has been five years. We cannot believe that it has been five years since we started The Very Vera Show. And it's because of people like you that have been with us and joined us and have been a fan of the show. I just want to thank you all so much for your attention and for your support. You know, we've had some wonderful guests that have joined us on the show. Great chefs, cookbook authors. We've done some incredible recipes, anything from appetizers all the way through dessert. And then not only that, we've given away some fantastic prizes. So I just want to thank you for your interest in our show. And hopefully season five is going to be the best yet. So what are we doing today? We're going to do a peanut butter pie that has a marshmallow meringue topping. I'm going to do my traditional yellow layers. That's right, a little secret from Very Vera. And I'm going to put a lemon curd and raspberry filling. And then finally, we're going to do a topping for that cake that is going to be really the the icing on the cake. So let's get started with this pie. One of my favorite things about it is actually the crust. So it's kind of like a granola sort of thing. So I'm using just some regular old-fashioned oats. I've got some sliced almonds, brown sugar, and then some softened butter. And this is just going to get mixed together and you can even use your hands if you wanted to. This is one of those times where if you've got a young person that really likes to get in the kitchen with you, this would be a great day to say, come join me, we're going to make a pie. And then when you add in peanut butter and chocolate to it, they're really going to want to get involved. But I've used this pie for a crust for quite a number of different pie fillings because it's so unusual. It bakes up really nice and brown, and it just gives that nice little crunch to what you're doing. All right, so I've got a prepared pie pan. I'm just going to put the filling right down in. And then you take your spoon and just kind of press it around on the sides. All right, so this, once I've got it all pressed in, is going to go in a 375 degree oven for about 10 minutes. But for time's sake, I've already got one ready for us. So let me turn my mixer on. This pie crust is already done, and you can see it just bakes up really beautifully. It's nice and crisp. It's going to be really crunchy on this pie. But my filling over here is a combination of peanut butter, whipping cream, all kinds of wonderful, delicious ingredients. And as always, our recipes are available on our website at veryvera.com. But this has been mixed together. It's nice and creamy. And now I'm going to take this off and we're going to fill it into the pie shell. Oh, the, just the smell of the peanut butter in this is fantastic. All right, so I'm going to put it in the pie shell. And this then is going to go into the freezer because the topping on this cake, on this pie, is what makes it so fantastic, is a combination of meringue and egg whites for a wonderful meringue. All right, so I'm going to spread this in, get this in the freezer, and when we come back, We'll get started on that meringue topping. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining us, we're on our way to making a delicious peanut butter pie with an oatmeal almond crust that is just divine, one of my favorite desserts. Um, this takes me back to some of my episodes that I did in season one, and I hope maybe there's some folks out there that joined me at that time. But this pie that I made ahead has already been in the freezer overnight, so the um, filling is nice and firm. And I've got my egg whites that have whipped up to a nice, stiff, consistency and I'm just going to start adding granulated sugar to this just a little bit at a time and you know sometimes when you make these meringues you've probably heard of the terminology weeping a weeping meringue and so one of the things that you want to be sure to do is not start adding the sugar until you've already seen those stiff peaks forming Another thing, if it's like a really humid day, it's kind of like when my grandmother would make divinity, I would, I would do, you know, add a little bit of cream of tartar. All right, so I'm gonna take this out. 
and fold in my marshmallow fluff. And then this is going to, last thing to this pie, it's gonna go into a broiler to get it almost like a marsh, toasted marshmallow. All right, so this is gonna be just delicious. All right, we're gonna spread this on real quick. And I've got my broiler set at 400 degrees and literally you're just gonna stand there and watch it. it. Just takes just a second for that to be nice and browned on the top. All right, so just spread this in. And don't you just love it when it's like a mile high meringue on top of a pie? If you'll go all the way to the edges with it too, it protects the frozen part. All right, so I'll put my little final touches on that right before it goes in the broiler. But I'm gonna move down now to the yellow layer cake that I'm doing. And we've already creamed the butter and sugar. I've got it nice and creamy. And now I'm gonna start adding the eggs one at a time. And you know, when I'm making my cakes, the key here is making sure that all of your ingredients are at room temperature. So the butter, the cream, the eggs, everything needs to be at room temperature. And you know, I'm a, a big fan of the Fresh Market. And when I make my cakes, I actually love to use their branded products. Their eggs, their butter, their heavy cream. Um, I just really have gotten very comfortable with their brand and like to use those. I'm gonna put my vanilla extract into the cream and I'm gonna put my other dry ingredients which are salt and baking powder into my flour. And all you're trying to do here with this layer cake is just get it whipped through. So at this point, I'll start adding my dry ingredients a little bit at a time. I'll turn that down just a little bit. And how do y'all like my new glass bowl on my mixer? This is something I did great for season five. I've been saving my money so I could get me a new bowl. But now you can see what I'm doing um, from all angles of the cameras. It's like, it's like food TV, I'm loving it. Okay, and if I would pay attention, I wouldn't have flour all over the counter. But you know, I'm such a fan of anything that has to do with baking. Of course, you know, I'm still noted as the cake lady. But one of the things that I love about a layer cake is that you can get that in the oven really quickly. You know, a pound cake, when it tells you to cream that butter and sugar for 20 minutes, I mean it. And on this, it's just really until everything is incorporated. All right, so just a little, you're alternating your dry and your liquid. And if at any point you feel like you need to go down on what you're doing, just turn your mixer off and just take your spatula. So while that's blended a little bit, let me show you a trick, a quick trick about my cake pan. You're gonna take a piece of parchment and you're gonna fold it like a napkin. Then you're gonna take this angle and come over and you're making a triangle. And no, I'm not making a paper airplane. That's what it looks like though. And then the pan that I'm using, I'm gonna flip it over and go to the center with it and just make a mark. And then cut straight away. And then that's my circle to go inside of my pan. All right, so I've got a little bit more to do before these go in the oven. And when we come back from the break, I'm going to finish the cake that I did yesterday. So let me get through doing this and you'd come back and join me in just a minute. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Okay, today we're gonna to be making some lemon curls to go on this delicious cake we're doing. So you wanna start with wa boiling water and I'm gonna add sugar to that to make a simple syrup. So I'm just gonna press really hard and take it slow and go all the way around the lemon. All right, so once you have the zest 
in place and you see you have very little rind there. You want to lay it flat and this is when a really good sharp knife comes in handy. You're making about an eighth of an inch strips and I did some ahead that I'm going to go ahead and drop into the water to be caramelizing. All right, so you've got your strips done. Now once they've caramelized for about 10 minutes, you wanna take them and put them on a cooling rack. Now you're gonna take just a regular uh, plastic straw. You're gonna take the lemon rind and just wrap it around the straw. Welcome back, and as you can see, this batter is nice and creamy. It's almost like pancake batter, so don't be alarmed if you think it's runny. And my prepared pans have the parchment circles. I sprayed the pan before the parchment went down, and then I sprayed it again when the parchment was in the pan. And I'm just evenly dividing the batter between the three pans and let me keep bragging about this new bowl to my mixer because look here, it's a pitcher. You know, how much easier is this to do than the standard bowl because you can pour whatever it is you're doing out. All right, so I think I've got a pretty even distribution. That baking powder is gonna just fluff these up so nicely. So I'm just gonna spread real quick. One little swift go. And then the trick I remember from standing beside my grandmother, whose name was Vera, was just hitting those pans twice before they go in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes or until golden. All right, so let's head this way and get started on the layer cake that was finished yesterday. And I went ahead and did all the processes to get me to this point. So let's talk about what that was. First of all, if you're gonna do a layer cake, you just gotta have a really nice cake stand. And I love this one. I've just got quite a collection of cake stands, but I've never had this one on the air before. It's one of my favorites. So what you wanna do is make sure your layers are good and cold. Um, so once those layers that I'm baking are cooled, you put them in the refrigerator to just kinda of get everything kinda of solid and gelled together. Put a little bit of your icing, no matter what kind you're using on the cake stand to kind of hold that first layer in place. Put a layer down and what we're doing today um, is a uh, has two different types of filling. So you want to use your icing as kind of a crumb filler first. The first layer filling is a lemon curd and I picked this up at Fresh Market. You can make your own lemon curd but I can completely recommend this Stonewall Kitchen Lemon Curd that they sell, nice and tart, sweet tart taste. Then you put your next layer, do the same thing again, your layer of icing, your layer of raspberry um, filling, which is again just another wonderful combination, raspberries and lemon. Then you put your top layer on, and when you do your crumb coat, what you're trying to accomplish there always start on the top is that you're wanting to put a thin layer of icing so that all of the crumbs will kind of get concealed in the cake so that when you do the final icing of the cake all those crumbs are not going to come off on your spatula. All right, so we've got the finished product. I also put a little bit of wax paper under it so that once I'm finished I can pull that off and I've got a clean cake plate. All right, always have a waste bowl handy in case for some reason you do get crumbs, you don't want that to go into your icing. This is also a one of my favorite cream cheese icing recipes. Used it on quite a number of the cakes that we used to make at Vera Vera. So again, you wanna start on the top. And this was what we were noted for was that swirl on the top. And even if you don't have one of those cake stands that you use that turns itself, you see it's not difficult at all to do that. And as I stand here doing this, I find myself doing what I did when I was on Throwdown with Bobby Flay, and then I was, I was kind of making a little dance out of it. All right, when you get ready to do the sides, you want a good tablespoon of icing on your spatula, and you're just making just a swift, motion just to cover that crumb coat and you're going all the way around 
the cake. And you know, you can't have too much of this kind of icing. I would just as soon just eat the icing. But let me go back to what we've already done here and show you how to do the very Vera swirl. So now we're gonna take just a little bit less of the icing and you're making just a swirl. And little by little, you'll do the whole side of the cake where you have that nice swirl technique. So getting in the kitchen with your young person and making a cake from scratch certainly reminds me of some of my most memorable times with my family. The things that I can remember most, the greatest stories, the most wonderful closeness with my grandmother and my mother was making cakes, whether it was for a special occasion or just to have for supper. So don't miss that opportunity yourself. Enjoy those times and come back with us because we're gonna put all of this together and have quite a spread of desserts. Welcome back everybody and I'm certainly in my niche today with all these things that have to do with baking because I just love it. And as you can see this pie turned out beautifully. Went under the broiler for just a few minutes and you can actually keep the oven door cracked while you're doing it to watch it. But it looks fantastic. And now it's time to garnish and make it look as beautiful as it's going to taste. And nothing's better than Hershey's syrup to make a plain white plate turn into a party. So I'm just going to take the sauce and just go straight across. Ooh, love that. And now, remember that this crust is really, really firm and hard. So your first piece may not come out exactly perfect, but when it doesn't, that's when you take what kind of didn't make it and you use it to add continual garnish to this because the almonds and the oatmeal just really make that beautiful. Love that. And you know, the dads love that dessert because it's peanut butter. The kids love it. You add the chocolate in and you've made everybody happy. All right, so now let's move over to the cake that we did. And there's nothing prettier than the inside of a layer cake. I absolutely love the way this looks, but it's gonna look even better on the top because we've got the lemon curls that we did and you know, they just stuck together on the little straws and you can eat this. It's candy, it's lemon candy. For those of you that are lemon heads out there, you're gonna absolutely, you're gonna wanna make these to snack on. And again, this is something fun to do with the kids to learn how to make little garnishes like this. But some of the lemon curls on the top, a few raspberries, that just really makes a very special look to this cake. So save a few of them because you want to garnish the plate. Now a couple of tips on slicing a cake. You want to have a clean sharp knife. You want to go straight down. And then when you lift it out, I love to put on the side with the icing side facing. And, you know, if you pay attention to how much filling you're putting in between, you know, the finished product, you want it to be just as cohesive and have that nice even distribution of your filling and your icing in between. So here again, let's take your the lemon curls and maybe a couple of the raspberries to put on top of that. Oh, I just love it. And I'm hoping to get to taste it in just a minute. But on a cake like this, because it's cream cheese icing, you want to make sure to keep it in the refrigerator. But you always want to serve a made from scratch cake at room temperature. Remember there was butter in this, real cream, all those wonderful fresh ingredients. And it's going to be very velvety if it's come to room temperature. So take it out a few hours before you're ready to serve it so that when your guests enjoy it, it's very velvety velvety and smooth tasting. Well, we've done quite a bit today. For those of you that are new to the show, remember that our recipes are always available at veryvera.com. And I've got some
some folks I want to welcome today. We're in three new markets, WMAZ in Macon, Georgia, WCBD in the Charleston area, and then WFXB in Myrtle Beach and Florence. I want to welcome you all to The Very Vera Show. I'm so happy to be with you. And as I always say on The Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I hope you'll come back and join me again next week for another episode of The Very Vera Show. Enjoy.